Let me say a big thank you to Carly for being long-term supporters of this channel. This week, of course, is Black Friday week, and therefore they're offering 25% off their OBD readers. To do this, go through the link in my description of this video and then use the code BLACK25 at checkout. But that's enough of that. Let's get straight into this race to Paris. So morning everyone, welcome to the Audi SQ8, which is my weapon of choice for today. It is miserable o'clock, it's 5.06, I've just left. Starting point was my parents' house in South West London, just near Heathrow, which is where Katie's going to be taking a flight from at 7.15. I've got a Euro tunnel crossing booked for 7.20, which means I should be getting into France or Calais at about 8.50 and I think Katie's landing into Paris Charles de Gaulle Airport at around, I want to say 9.30 French time. From Calais it should take me about three hours to get to Paris if the traffic's okay. We might be able to make up some more time on that as well but all in it looks like Katie's probably got the slight edge on this one because the flight's quick it all depends on public transport delays, her ability to navigate through Paris, and I suppose the traffic that I encounter or don't encounter. Hopefully though, this should be the ideal car to go up against Katie because it's extremely comfortable, which is perfect for my old man back, and it's extremely fast, extremely fast. So also perfect for making up some time right now and later on as we get into France. Okay, so I've just ordered my Uber, Joel's just driven off and it'll be here in five minutes and then I'll be on my way to Terminal 5, straight on that flight and straight to Paris. There's just no way that Joel's gonna win this. Here it is. It's absolutely freezing. <laughs> So I'm through security and I'm just having a nice relax with a cup of coffee. Um, my gate will be shown in about half an hour and then I'll head down there and get on the flight. It all looks okay at the moment, no delays. So that's very good. But the thing that I am really worried about is my phone because it runs out of battery immediately. I have like 60% already and it's only uh, 6 a.m. So that's really concerning because when I get to Paris, I'm gonna need my phone to help me get to the Eiffel Tower because my sense of direction is so, so bad. I wonder how Joel's getting on, but I don't wanna call him because I don't wanna distract him. <laughs> Right, so we've made it to the Euro Tunnel in incredible time. Very, very quick, no traffic this morning. We're able to do, you know, maximum speed the whole way, and by that I mean speed limit the whole way. We've arrived at 10 past six. So, there's two things here. One, am I gonna get on an earlier train? I think the answer to that is no. Yeah, no, I'm still gonna be on the 720. 
either I could have got an earlier train or I don't and that means I've got more time to get myself a coffee so it's a win-win really right so got myself a coffee and a little bit of breakfast from good old Starbucks that's the joy of the motor vehicle is that I'm sitting in the comfort of my own seat and I'm warm and I think Katie at this point what is it 620 so she'll be probably walking through terminal 5 now looking for her gate maybe even having to go through a gate then get on a bus then drive to the airplane and then she's going to be crammed in there for about an hour and a half so at the moment I'm quite happy where I am and our final destination today is the Eiffel Tower so it's going to be the first one to get there fingers crossed when I get to Calais it should be a three hour run, which would get me into the city at around 11.50. So Katie, I'm expecting to get there around 11.30, me 11.50. So we've got to make some time up or she's got to have some issues. Seven twenty-two. We've just started moving, and that is Katie's flight has literally just taken off. But that is bad news because that for Heathrow is quick. That she's actually taken off six minutes after leaving the gate. Because if you guys know Heathrow, you can spend 20, 30 minutes taxiing, especially at this time in the morning. So I've got my work cut out. We're on our way at least two minutes late. I am starting to worry a little bit, but for now I'm just going to try and relax, catch up on a bit of sleep because I got none of that yesterday. Luckily these seats are electric and I think will recline a fair bit. So I'm just going to do that. Oh, oh that's better. Oh yeah. I'm just waiting to get off the plane. Joel specifically put me near the back so that it would take me longer to get off. So I'm just waiting for everybody else to clear out before I can get off. But I have just heard that he's having problems at the Eurotunnel, so there may be some hope to me. And I'm gonna give him a call when I get off the flight. We are here. And for some reason, someone's not moving up ahead. Brilliant. I don't know what's going on. Oh, the lady's on her walkie talkie. I'm guessing someone's car's not starting. This is not good. We should be off the train by now. Okay, I'm off the plane. It felt like such a quick flight. It felt like I closed my eyes and opened them when I was in Paris. And we arrived well on time. So things are looking pretty good for me right now. I'm just trying to find how to leave the airport. Here aboard, this is Buster's taking out from close traveling on the upper deck. We currently have a broke down vehicle on the front of the train. Our recovery for the team has been called and we'll be on site shortly. In the meantime, we'll switch your engine off and wait for you. Sorry for the quick thing again. Oh, for f. Hi. We're just waiting for the breakdown. Team. No problem. They are on site, we've got our own chaps, so okay. it shouldn't be long. I think okay. it's just a quick jump start. Yeah, it's <laughs> battery dead. Yeah, well, that's probably a new battery job. Yeah, okay, no problem. Yeah, he said the van doesn't do very any long journeys, so. Yeah. One of those things, isn't it? We're toast. Oh, I don't believe this. I've travelled on the Eurotunnel maybe only about 10, 15 times now and I've never once had this. Obviously it happens, but it's just typical. It's now when I'm in this race. I touched down less than 15 minutes ago and I'm already out. I mean, that's crazy. If Heathrow was like that, I'd fly all the time. Everything is going ridiculously well, which is making me a bit nervous. I feel like something's about to go horribly wrong. Okay, we're moving. Let's go. It's only 9.07, so that has cost us about 17 minutes from when we were meant to get off this train. We have got some progress to be making. I need a wee, but I can't stop. <laughs> Eleven fifty six arrival. Let's see how much we can. 
reduce that. And we're in the right mode, we're in the individual mode, which I have set up so you can configure your steering, the sound, the suspension, and it changes the whole sort of drivetrain as well, so throttle response and gear shifts. And of course, in my individual mode, we've got everything in the firmest setting, so we're as low as possible, which means body roll, actually, for something this size, is fairly minimal. And the sound is a little bit more, a little bit more pronounced. And it does still definitely sound V8, this thing. I landed early and I'm already through passport patrol and everything. You're joking. I'm not. Oh, no, I'm done for. <laughs> oh, and you no know what? Key. I just walked straight through. Oh, uh, you what? know, well, I'm at a toll stop and I'm in a right hand drive car, and so I've got to literally get out of the car now, walk around. <laughs> I hate my life. Oh, dear. Do you, how it's long do you right. think it's going to take you to get into town? Well, I don't know because I don't even know where the train station is at this point. So, and my phone is rapidly losing battery, which is the thing I'm most worried about. Hang on, I'm just getting out of the car to get my bloody ticket. Okay. <laughs> but the gates in the closed before I even get through. Go, go, run, run, go. There we go. <laughs> Are you really calm? Oh, I'm so calm. Yeah, you sound really calm. Um, yeah, well, it's just not gone well, has it? So you're, you're out, you're through. Yeah, so I'm just about to go to the train now. I can see a sign for it. Um, and then, yeah, I'm just going to try and navigate my way to the Eiffel Tower. Oh, dear. Well, I think uh -huh. this is over before it's really started. Really? I think you can do it. I've got two hours and 26 minutes to run. You you underestimate my sense of direction. What? Well, I overestimate that, your sense of direction. I, that's what I meant, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, this could, this could take me hours. I think you not being we'll able see. to get into the centre of Paris from De Gaulle in less than two hours and 20 minutes would be quite an achievement. <laughs> okay. Well, let's see. <laughs> okay, I'll see you there. Give me a call when you get lost, okay? <laughs> sure, sure. Okay, I'll see you later. See Good you luck. later. Well, there you have it. Katie, it's, it's 9.30. Her flight isn't even meant to have arrived yet. Her flight was meant to arrive at 9.35, and she is already through and out the other end, ready to get on a train. So I, I, I like to make the video as tense as possible, but unless I do 300 kilometers an hour, which I don't think you can in this car, you could sit at 250 quite nicely, but even then, I don't think we're gonna make it. We've got 250 kilometers to run. So yeah, unless I average 250 kilometers an hour, it's not gonna happen. We might be able to get the two hour 24 estimate down to two hours flat. But right now we're just gonna have to do as much of this as possible. See how much time we can make up. Let's make the gap as close as it can possibly be. There's a tiny bit of hope, but right now I'm not feeling it. According to City Map, and my current journey time is 70 minutes from here to the Eiffel Tower. So I feel so confident. I don't know if I'm being ridiculous, but I mean, 70 minutes, and Joel's got two hours left in the car. I feel pretty confident that I'm going to get there way in advance of him. There is always the chance, though, with me that I will get on the wrong train or go in the wrong direction for a long time before I realise that I'm doing it wrong. So I'm going to really try and focus, get on the right trains, get there way in advance. It's also very quiet in the airport. There's like nobody here, look. 
progress update, according to my uh, map here on the display on the car, we are about halfway between Calais and Rouen. Well, we're actually not going there, but we're driving past it. And 170 km from the Eiffel Tower. Now, I got the ETA quite far down, actually. We covered about 100 kilometers in, well, not long at all. It was very quick. But now we're stuck in another contraflow and I'm behind someone that is doing 80 kmh to the absolute dot and so that estimated time of arrival is just going back to where it was. This is really frustrating because there is nothing I can do right now, absolutely nothing. I wonder if Katie's got on that train yet to get towards the city or if she's still lingering at the airport. If she is still lingering at the airport then we're definitely in with a chance here because only an hour and 49 according to this and I think we can bring that down but there's nothing in front we're doing 80 and this person keeps braking it's just infuriating absolutely infuriating okay I have the ticket our ticket I hope it's the right one and now I have to locate some kind of train I really hope this is the right train it doesn't say it literally doesn't say anywhere. I hope this is right. I'm on a train. Now with 110 kilometers to go, cruising at 140 km, 145 km, unfortunately, we uh, are behind a gendarme, a gendarmery vehicle, which is, well, I think they're like military police. But either way, flying past him at 250 kilometers an hour is probably not a good idea. So we've backed off a little bit. And it's probably not a bad thing because it means our range, which has been drastically dropping, will now settle a little bit. And I do desperately need the toilet. So at the next spot, I will pull over and do that. I'm at peace with the whole race thing now. I've put the car into comfort. It's actually really uh, quite spectacular, the difference between suspension modes on this. It's very firm and actually the steering, very, very like uh, precise and heavy in the dynamic mode. So let's just talk about the car a little bit in terms of the comfort. It's fantastic. It's got everything you would expect from a car like this. Heated seats, heated wheel, adaptive cruise control, you guys know and you love this Audi display, it's fantastic. You can flip between maps, uh, entertainment, information about the car, Apple CarPlay, uh, which is wireless actually, which is really nice. But I think what really is spectacular with this SQ8 is just, I mean, it's unbelievable that a car this size, this comfortable, will shift like this does. I mean, the, the power plant in this car is an absolute masterpiece. It is so effortless in every single rev range, yet so, so quiet. Of course, I'd say the only disadvantage with this power plant, but it's to be expected, is when you do get on it, it, it eats fuel, it goes through it at an alarming rate. I think you'd probably be looking at around 13, 14 miles per gallon if you're sort of pushing on, whereas economy driving, you'd get 25. Which is not great by new standards but for something again this size and this unaerodynamic it's not bad but I think Audi have done a really good job with the SQ8 in terms of the styling and I genuinely mean this I think it's a really good looking car it definitely helps this specification galaxy blue paintwork is fantastic okay I wouldn't have all the chrome uh, trim and I'd probably go for some black wheels but I love this interior as well. I, I think it's a grey or it's almost silver, these seats. And obviously with the sort of stitching and the quilted effect, it looks lovely and got that all the way throughout. This big glass panoramic roof. And yeah, I think that contrasts super nicely with the Galaxy Blue paintwork. I do love the way this thing looks. And especially when you chuck it into dynamic air suspension and it squats right down. You know, you'd think you're looking at a Lamborghini Urus, which of course this sort of is, or at least the slightly bigger brother of this, the RSQ8, is basically a Urus. That's Katie, I bet she's there. Tell me the bad news then. Uh, how does he know? 
you, are you at the Eiffel Tower? No, 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 more bad news. Bad news um, for you? Bad news, basically, yeah. Okay. Bad news for me. I'm at the station. First of all, I'm very confused. Okay. I'm at like, uh, it's like the underground part and it's just very confusing. The signs are really confusing. Oh no. And I don't know if I'm on the right platform, but that's not the bad news. The bad news is that all of the trains are being cancelled and there's tons of announcements that I don't understand. Oh, what a shame. <laughs> saying, like, I know. Oh, thanks. You sound really sincere oh, no. and really that's, worried about me. That is awful. I mean, I don't know what to do. I don't know whether to like find a new route, walk there. I don't know what to do. Um, but I just thought I'd let you know. Can I do anything to help you? Why are you being nice now? Um, because I've just pulled over and I'm going to have a coffee, so I'm in a good mood all of a sudden. <laughs> you don't have that much time. I'm so close. I'm so close. I'm literally like three stops away. So even if I ran there, oh, you no. stopping for a coffee is a bad, bad move. Well, I'm bad. still an hour and ten minutes away, so it's not looking good, is it? Exactly. No, it's not. But I mean, there is a bit of hope because I am quite, quite confused, but not oh, dear. that much hope. Oh dear. Not coffee kind of hope. Well, I can hear the Frenchies talking, so I'll let you get on with it and see if they yeah. tell you anything okay. useful. Lots yeah. of love. Okay. Good luck. Love you. Try and I'll stay. see you at the Eiffel Thanks. Tower. You will. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Right, so thanks to Katie's unfortunate mishap. Well, it's not really a mishap, it's just French public transport. I think I've afforded myself a quick lose stop, so I've just done that. But now that there's a small fighting chance that we're back in this, let's get the car in dynamic mode. And now's probably an ample opportunity to show you just how fast this car is. And that is French motorway speed just like that. Unbelievable. And like I say, in any gear, at any speed, Put it back into manual. Let's try third gear, 100 kmh, up to 130. And it's there, unbelievable. For the size of this car, it's spectacular. Anyway, stop playing around now. Get back up to a good speed and try see if we can get to Paris within the hour. 86 kilometers to go. Okay, I'm now very confused. I don't know if my trains are canceled or if their other trains are canceled because I don't know which route I'm going on. So it's very confusing. I am gonna wait here for a while because I think I have a bit of time, but I, if a train doesn't come along uh, in the next 10 minutes, which it says it should, then I'll find a different route. I'll walk, I'll run if I have to, but I cannot lose. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna give it 10 minutes and then make a new plan. Message back from Katie. Katie said no train, so had to run for a bus. Journey time 45 minutes. And did you say you were an hour away when we called? Would you like to reply? No. Okay, that's everything. So, Katie is 45 minutes away by bus. Apparently I'm 58 minutes away. So, that means we're in. We are back in the game. Oh my goodness, I can't believe it. I really can't believe this. Okay, so this is getting interesting for me now as well. I don't want to make a mistake. I can see the Eiffel Tower ahead. Oh my goodness, 19 kilometers of driving, but I can see it. That's incredible. What an amazing building that is. I've only got 80 kilometers of range left. And yeah, I'm just stuck behind traffic at the moment, but there's so many turns and I panic at driving in cities. So I've got to make sure I don't make any mistakes now because I think if I make no mistakes and we have a good run in, we could actually win this. We could actually win this. I can't believe I'm saying that. 
but there's a chance, isn't there? I uh, know this genuinely is a disaster. This is a disaster. And there was another announcement saying no trains for the next half an hour, so I am stuck. I need to find some kind of bus and then run <laughs> because it's really getting tight now. expecting a text at any moment to come through saying that Katie has arrived. I made it on the bus but it's a 50 minute drive. There's no way at this point that I am winning. I'm sweating. I'm very upset. Almost just being T-boned from the right. Yeah, alright mate. About to get T-boned by a bus. Now. Okay, this is my stop. I'm off the bus. I'm gonna run to the car park because I have no idea whether Joel is near, whether he's still miles away. I can see the Eiffel Tower from here. So I feel like I've done a really good job. Wow, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've got to get running because I don't know if he's here or not. I'm terrified that he's just standing there with a smug face. Like, he actually won. Oh my goodness. <laughs> What's going on? I'm here. Oh! <laughs> I'm here, where are you? You've won then. Yeah. That's that. I've won. I might just turn around and go back to London now. No, don't leave me in Paris. It's really pretty here. <laughs> that was right. closer than I thought it would be. You know what? That was much closer than I thought. Yeah, I was, I was like from the plane to being out of the airport, it was less than 15 minutes. Which is not right for Paris. No, it's not right, but it was great. And now I have won, so. <sighs> <laughs> that was fun, that was good fun. Oh, we've lost. That's annoying. I don't mean to smile, but he sounds so unhappy. <laughs> he sounds so unhappy. I'm pretty happy though. I'm gonna go and get him a croissant and some coffee, and then maybe that will cheer him up when he gets here. But we won. We won. Bollocks. French stereotypes can we list off, Joel? Berets, baguettes, mm, what else is there? Croissants, cigarettes, women with hairy armpits. Maybe I should stop there before I get my channel taken down. And the end is in sight. That is the Eiffel Tower. You probably can't quite see it, but it is there. You'll have to take my word for it. It's right there. We're only 950 metres away now. Back across this bridge and across the Sien River for the second time. You're about to hit me. Ah! Oh, this is just miserable. This is not fun <laughs> at all. I love driving, but whatever this is, no, it's not that. Supposedly, Katie is just down here. I see her. <laughs> Hello. Well, we both made it to Paris and the Eiffel Tower. The thing's so huge, it's impossible to get it and the car 
in one shot, but you can just see it on the corner of the screen. We are really here. And I have to say, Katie, congratulations. Thank you very much. You won the race. I did. Love and it. you won in the end by about 30 minutes. Yeah. I think I arrived at about 12.05 and you were here from about 11.35. Mm -hmm. So your estimation of a 45 minute bus ride was more like 30 minutes. And then my 58 minute journey to Paris was more like an hour and 10 by the time I had to navigate the Arc de Triomphe and all that crazy yeah. traffic. We've got a day here or one night here. And then, uh, well, we have the pleasure of driving this wonderful SQ8 back to London tomorrow. Get to do it all over again, except we won't have to, or I won't have to rush and really just enjoy the car. We can cruise and take in the sights and have a good time. This will be one of those other epic road trips, which I remember. So of course, I want to say a huge thanks to Audi UK for loaning me the SQ8 and for trusting me to bring it to Paris. That's just fantastic. It's been incredible. I hope you guys have enjoyed this race style video. I've wanted to do one of these for a while on the channel now. So this seemed to be the perfect opportunity for it. And of course, thank you, Katie, again, you. for putting your face on camera on the channel. <laughs> please be nice. Please and, be uh, nice. Yeah, please be nice. <laughs> and uh, thank you all so much for watching. Leave a comment. Let me know what you thought of the video, whether you'd like to see more of this in the future and if you enjoyed it overall. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you very, very soon.